welcome back to the Christian Life Podcast, where we have good conversation for practical Christian living. Today we're on episode 29, and we're going to be talking about Hurricane Helene. We are your hosts, Michael Brazier and Art Nuremberg. So today I wanted to, I guess, spend most of our time talking about Hurricane Helene, its impact here. Right. Because I know it was like yeah. two weeks ago, but we haven't really met in yes. three weeks, that, something like been that. A while. We were out of power, I guess, for eight days or so. Eight days. And we yeah. didn't have internet for longer than that. I don't know. It was like. Do we still 11, have it? Do we have it yet? Yeah, <laughs> some of us have it. <laughs> so, okay, so, we're back um, so we can, you know, do the podcast now. So, but yeah, it was a big, I would say it was a really big event in our area, a huge event, well, especially in Western North Carolina, but even in Greenville and. Going mm-hmm. further south. So um, I thought it would be good if we talked about it and some of the lessons that we learned and some of the thoughts that we had right. on yeah. on the topic. So I guess to start out, maybe give a like super brief timeline, and then I'll give it over to you to kind of just talk about um, how it impacted the, the campus and whatnot. So okay. it was, I guess it was Friday. Yeah, when it was, it was Friday, super fast. Yes, it was. <laughs> like 6 a.m. It like really hit us and then it was 6 a.m 8 a.m 9 a.m i lost power at like my house about six i think most people lost Mm -hmm. it around six and then um by noon it was out of here like it was a really fast like it had rained maybe three days prior like consistently and so we had some flooding not a ton of flooding but um and then yeah the winds were really strong they were right 70 ish mile per hour, per hour winds and um but yeah it looked especially in the neighborhood it looked like tons of trees were down right. tons and tons of trees right um <clears throat> pretty much everybody in greenville county which is almost it's six hundred fifty thousand people in greenville county 99 percent of us were without power. right yeah um say, yeah. so anyways it was a pretty big impact in the upstate and then if you go into north carolina they had a ton of flooding just from the terrain of the mountains right. and all that water going down. They got like 15 inches from the actual storm and that caused a ton of yeah flooding. Like they said, the French broad was typically three feet is like their typical running. And it was like up to 30 something yeah. feet. I mean like tons of like those small towns like Lake Lure and Jimmy rock and Swannanoa. I mean, right. they just were, there is no town anymore. That's right. And um, mm-hmm. so anyway, so it really mm-hmm. devastated Western North Carolina but it was about a week or so without power for most everybody in the right. county. Yeah. Um, and then, and yeah, people are still struggling with internet outages and right. whatnot. And, um, but yeah, Western North Carolina, we've gotten a lot of it back with power, but not all of it. And it will be months, if not years for yeah. the infrastructure to all be basically built back. Right. So, um, I would say it was our first major hurricane that's hit us yeah, um, it, in this way, at least. That definitely a unique storm. Yeah. It was very so, unique. But tell us a little bit, like, the impacts on campus. Okay. the um, Yeah, it, it's a uh, – we're very grateful to God for keeping us. I yeah. mean, we just have to – we have to give thanks to him because um, we have trees down all around the campus, but none of them hit anything right. that was important. I mean, and nobody was hurt, which is quite amazing with respect to the timing hmm. because um, we were looking for it all night of what was going to happen. You remember? In the, and actually, it was a very calm night yeah, until about 5 o'clock in the morning. You thought, well, maybe we missed it. Maybe maybe it it fell apart and didn't, um, didn't come to us. But when it came, it came... <laughs> Suddenly, all of a sudden, it yeah. was here, and um, and by the time it was starting to get really bad, there was actually light daylight. And one of the concerns is that people might be out; they might be out looking around or playing around or doing, you know, just yeah. because it was interesting, you know, in one sense. So, um, but as it turned out, the uh, we had some close calls, but we didn't have any. <laughs> we didn't have anybody get really hurt. And that's the grace of God to us. Yeah. And uh, trees that fell fell away from the buildings instead of towards the buildings. Yeah. And so a lot of damage, but nothing that has to be rebuilt. And so we are grateful to that. Mm-hmm. Again, it's been a long time since we had one of these, since uh, yeah. <laughs> one of these podcast uh, sessions, because 
we just couldn't do it for a couple weeks. For <laughs> yeah, a week and then another week without internet. So yeah. it was. So we're grateful for that. But again, when we say that, uh, we've been thinking about, you know, the sovereignty of God and, and how we respond to circumstances. And it is important to note that uh, we're grateful that God kept us and protected us. But we are not by that saying that anybody who didn't or had difficulties, it was because God wasn't taking care of them. That's, that's very important. Uh, we had some people from another church that testified that, you know, the Lord kept them by waking them up and they moved to one side of the building yeah. only to have a tree cut their house in half. Now they were, they were protected, but they did lose their home. And um, we don't want to give the impression that he did keep us, but, and we give thanks for that. But those who, there was just plenty of damage. It isn't an indication that God didn't care about them. That's always important in our, in our view of life. That when he when he keeps us and we're conscious that he kept us, we should give thanks. When things go, what we might consider wrong, he's still keeping us. He's always keeping us because uh, being part of the human race, we suffer right along with everybody else. The rain falls on the good, the just, and the unjust, but so does disaster. It comes on yeah. the just. It comes on the unjust. And so, um, but we are grateful that um, that we were so wonderfully kept, and that nobody was hurt, and mm -hmm. that we don't have to rebuild buildings, and we don't have to. And we're able to get back into school so quickly. Yeah. And so we give thanks to God for that. I know. I think it's one of those things that um, is a big thought, like in people's minds, like especially like in this circumstance. But natural disasters happen all over the world, right? Yeah, <laughs> all the time, and. Um, you can, I guess, like when you live through a situation, ours was fairly easy, but where perhaps your house is destroyed or people you right. love lose their lives, it can be really challenging and just like devastating that whole situation. And I guess it can be tempting to think that, well, that person's house is still there, but right. mine is not. And like, um, God blessed them in some way and he kept right. them and right. he didn't keep me because there's some issue. But I think um, that's like going back to like what Jesus spoke about, like when they asked about the lame man and he's like, well, right. what did his parents sin right. and like what caused him to be lame? But I think it, it goes back to the, that big lesson that we have to trust God right. in those situations right. and it doesn't make it any easier, the yeah. losing of your home. Yeah. Um, but yeah, can you like, I guess, speak to that a little bit more and just like give me your yeah. your thoughts? Because I think that's a huge, huge thing, whether it's a storm or yeah. normal life. <laughs> yeah, I think it's important. And it's for our perspective, we have to keep our balance. And it's easy to lose the balance on that. It is easy to fall into the idea that bad things happen to people because they're bad. Mm -hmm. And good things happen to people because they're good. And that the book of Job just blows that out of the way water that that just isn't the way it works out in life good people sometimes suffer bad people sometimes prosper um, this isn't the place where god sorts out judgment that will happen after a person dies right now he's extending a gospel to them he is calling them to to repent and he's 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 being kind to people on this earth uh, this isn't the time primarily of judgment judgments to come okay so um, the prayer, the Lord's prayer finishes with keep us from the evil one. Uh, it doesn't say keep us from evil because that's really not going to happen on this earth. We're not going to be kept from evil completely, but we want to be kept from the devil in it. We want to be kept from those uh, things that the devil would do to um, take advantage of that, to knock us off in faith or to hurt um, the kingdom of God's purpose. So we're asking for that. Um, I think it's interesting when the Lord finishes that long section in, in um, Matthew chapter 6 about don't seek for the things that the Gentiles are seeking. Then he finishes it by saying this, um, don't be anxious about tomorrow. <laughs> don't worry about tomorrow. But he doesn't say no, don't be anxious tomorrow because it'll take, you know, because I, everything will be okay. He says today's troubles are enough for today. Hmm. Just handle what's handle the troubles of the day and that'll be enough the indication from that is that you're 
every day you're going to face difficulties mm -hmm. and problems and and some of those are going to be small some of them are going to be major mm -hmm. but that's just part of being in a fallen world mm -hmm. but you want to be kept from the evil one in it yeah. and that's where we don't want to measure the love of god towards us in terms of how much difficulty we run into mm -hmm. And we don't want to try to compare ourselves to anybody else because he does. Why does he why does he do something for one person? He doesn't do it for the other. We do not know. We just know that he loves us. All right. He proved that at the cross and he has a wonderful future for us. And we have the chance to glorify him in the in the circumstance as they actually occur. This is such a rare it, it's for us. It, I mean, Greenville doesn't have these kinds of problems. I mean, we just don't have them. In 50 years of being in Greenville, South Carolina, I've never seen anything like that no, that morning. Uh, winds that heavy. But he allowed it. Why? In fact, actually, the center of the storm went right over top of us. Yeah. <laughs> so in Greenville, one side of Greenville was all torn up and the other side wasn't because the storm, the eye went right through us. And on the one side, it was terrible. And the other side, not so bad. Yeah. Same thing up in North Carolina. So, does God love the people on the left more than the you know, ones on the right? No, He doesn't. It doesn't matter. It's just that's just life. Yeah. It's just life, and He's the same God of both to go both groups. So, yeah, I think what you said there, like the love of God is not measured by blessing or hardship, and yep. it's just God loves you. And right. I think like like that's like that is the building block, the foundational right. element of it. It's not a it's not like balancing the scale. Right. Um, but like our, like we live as Christians with the reality that God loves us. Right. And that doesn't depend on whether I have a lot of money in my bank account or my right. um, house survived the storm or, <laughs> right. you know, someone I love didn't die of cancer or any of those kind of like terrible tragedies on this side or on that side. Right. It's the foundational element that he loves you and right. like, and he sent his son to die for you. And right. like he has, there's, um, yeah, just like evidence for God's love for right, us. Right. And I think that's it's keeping that eternal perspective on. Yeah. It because actually we're not here very long. Yeah. So the difference between a person who's greatly blessed on this earth and one who struggles a lot and suffers a lot, it looks big in the seventy years we're here. Mm -hmm. But the Lord loved me and gave himself for me to prepare a place for me where I'm gonna live forever. No matter what happens to me here, this is two minutes, yeah, and then we got eternity out there. So that perspective just ha it has to come back to us, and um, we're grateful when He does protect us. I mean, there's no question. Uh, again, we had one young man who was out <laughs> in the storm driving uh, right up our driveway, yeah. and one of those big trees. And it was a huge tree came down and hit the truck, but it just grazed it. He didn't. Yeah. He only. He, a second earlier and uh, he, he would have gotten crunched yeah he would have i mean it probably would have killed him if it if it had hit the cab as big as that tree was but it didn't yeah. so god kept us and and we we just need to give thanks for that mm -hmm. but that's not because we're better than somebody else yeah. it's just because he's good and in his goodness he kept and we always should give thanks for what he does do for us uh, but not compare ourselves to him. It's not a comparative thing. If he chooses suffering for us, he chooses. It's for a good purpose. It's yeah. always a good purpose. Anyway. One of the things that I was, well, I, there's two things I noticed. One, um, which isn't so much about, I guess, a Christian perspective, but I noticed even like the morning that the, the hurricane went through, it was, you know, like 10, 11 o'clock in my apartment, everybody was like outside. And it was like, no one had power and no one had um, mm, internet yeah. and no one had cell service. Like, I mean, like everybody was literally cut off from everybody right, else. Yeah. And all you had was your neighbors. And it was like a really interesting eye-opening experience because like I met all these people who like live on the same street as right. me, who I have never seen before in my, like, my entire right. life. And I've lived there 16 months. Yeah. And so it was just an interesting experience of like, we talk a lot about like the impact of phones and right. um just modern technology on our lives and how we as christians should um interact with it but i thought it was an interesting thing 
when all of that was gone, we were just regular people right. on the street looking at the damage of the trees and the power lines and whatnot. And it was like a moment to just like interact with other human beings. And I thought like, wow, in that moment, like it, it was just, I thought it was impactful about how like these are real people and they have real lives and you never see them. Right. But then like, but God loves them. Like as right. Christians, like as a Christian, I don't see them ever, but like God is, he loves them. And some of them are Christian. Some of them are not, but his desire is that they would know him. Right. And I guess it like just was like a really eye opening experience. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah. Well, I think it, I think it's important because it, um, that's one of the reasons I think he doesn't always protect us. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody in Greenville went through the storm. Everybody had the power out. Yeah. Everybody is going through exactly the same thing. Well, not exactly, because some people had more damage than other people. But we're going through this together. Why is he allowing that? He's allowing that because it, that is it's those kinds of things. It's actually suffering and the experience, the real experiences of everyday life that put Christians and non-Christians in contact on things that really count mm-hmm. not who won the football game or you know what music but now we're down to the issues that have to do with life yeah. and, and deep things and yeah. important things and um so those circumstances create the opportunity for us mm-hmm. to interact about something other than superficial things yeah. at a time when people are thinking about something other than superficial yeah. things so very often we have to, as we're trying to bring the gospel to people, we have to work past their their little lives that they're living and, and they're involved in those lives and, and they don't really have time to think about it. Mm-hmm. But well, once during that storm, we had time to think. Yeah, it was, it was a very quiet one week, at least without power, because, I mean... Like there was, like it was really weird because like there was no cell service. Like right. you couldn't even try to call somebody, you couldn't right. text anybody, you couldn't go on the internet because there's no Wi-Fi, and like, it was just a very like, it was it was an interesting experience yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, and then something else that I was I, it impacted me was the response of the local church Amen. to Amen. need, and I thought it was like such a good example of what it means to like love one another, right? And I don't know. I was just like really mm. like local organizations, local churches wasn't like all set up and planned, but like yep. people met other people's needs. And I thought right. like that is the gospel practically lived out right yep. in those situations. So what did, yep. yeah, your thoughts? Yeah, I think that that was one of the big, uh, you know, I'm real grateful for all the opportunities that churches had. And again, you see, it, it's when you get down to what really counts, you see the churches coming together, yeah. participating together because they have a common need, and it was serious need. Again, we didn't have it in Greenville. We had damage. Yeah, um, North Carolina. I mean, it's just it's still it's just heartbreaking. Yes, I mean, like I mean, they said, like downtown Asheville just got their water running again. I mean, yeah. that's like three weeks. Yeah. That's, yeah. And you don't even think about that as like water, not like I don't, it's such a first yeah. world convenience, but it's so baked into yeah. like, um, yeah. and to think about the water being off for three weeks. Uh, and so many of those people, yeah. yeah. So many of those people that lived up in the up in the upper parts of the hills, they can't even get to them. I yeah. mean, it's it's they're just they're just making it to them. But uh, but it gave the church a chance, and and I think that um, it has been a a tremendous um, response of the church to to what's going on because truthfully it was it was christian people who were there first yeah the first people to take care really take care were again there were local officials but it was a mess it was just a mess and yeah. and church is still participating and going to help those people dig out of it um we had again students from the school had a chance to go, but we're not unique in that. I mean, people all over Greenville have been organizing groups to go up, and it's 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 the relief effort just been has been very good, and mm-hmm. and the opportunity then to really talk about the Lord, and yeah. uh, and I have been grateful to see Samaritan's Purse organizing it, yeah, and and the way in which they have been purposely evangelistic in it mm-hmm. they're doing this but they're not they're not 
they're not failing to also tell people why they are there. Yeah. They are there because they want to serve the Lord. So um, it has been a big opportunity now again. Yeah. yeah. And I think like that in and of itself is like a really big thing because you can, it's easy to sit in your ivory tower and like tell the world like you're all sinners and you need yeah. the Lord to save you or whatever, however you want to spend it. But, but at its heart, if we are not willing to meet people where they're at, then it's really hard to tell them about the gospel. Right. Like, and so um, using the means of like, we have this opportunity, like a great opportunity yeah. to go practically meet the needs. And then through that opportunity, we can also tell them like the reason right. why our heart behind it. Right. And um, I think that in and of itself is like a good thing that came out of a terrible circumstance. Right. Um, and I, I think of like often like in the Psalms, it talks a lot about meeting the needs of the the widow and the um, orphans and then the, the foreigners and the destitute and these people who are ultimately the most vulnerable in a society. Right. And in this moment, and I don't think it's like necessarily just to those categories, but in ancient times, right. those were the yeah. categories that were most vulnerable. But in this time, the people that lost everything, these towns in right. Swan and Noah and Chimney Rock and Lake Lure, they're the most vulnerable among right. us because they don't have running water. They don't have right. food. They don't have electricity. They don't have a house. They don't have roads. Like they have nothing. So they are truly vulnerable in their circumstances. And, <laughs> um, but then right. being like, but meeting those needs and like the Lord often in the Psalms, it's often portrayed like the, the righteous, they right. the needs of those yeah. people. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I was just thinking about like that in the sense of how, yep. Yeah, it's just a practical way for right. us to, to share the gospel. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think there's the other side too, that goes along with it. I've been very encouraged by the number of people that lost everything who were believers mm. and had a chance to testify mm -hmm. to what counts and what doesn't count. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's amazing how many stories are people mm -hmm. who, and a world out there can't exactly ignore them. Yeah. Because they're not talking in generalities. That was their home. That was their business. This is this is our livelihood. A number of those places that we're talking about heavily, um, the income is is around uh, tourist yeah. uh, situations. And it's going to be years the before too. they yeah. put it back together yeah. again. So what are those families going to do? They didn't have. They weren't extremely wealthy. People they had tourist oriented businesses mm -hmm. that are gone yeah. which will i mean may be slowly replaced but for them to testify that this isn't what really matters mm -hmm. you know the lord met us this way and he did this that is tremendous mm -hmm. because people have to in a sense have to listen to that they can't yeah. they can't pass it off as superficial mm -hmm. because they could go through something like that yeah and uh and I think that's just, again, it's one of the other opportunities the Lord has given. There was a lot of heartbreak in North Carolina, but there there were a lot of believers up there. And yeah. uh, they they have testified, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. I think it's important, like, just for wrapping up, but, like, that we took this podcast to think about it. Because, right. like you said at the beginning, it is so important that we give thanks. Right. Give thanks to the Lord for his protection then also give thanks for, to the Lord, I think, for the the display of his church meeting the needs right. and for his people who testified of his goodness right. despite loss. Um, and ultimately to his glory, because in the tragedy of this hurricane and this natural disaster, there were moments of like good things that happened Amen. because of it. Amen. And so anyway, so I think that is it's important to give testimony to that. Um, do you have any closing? No, thoughts? I think that's that's the big thing. That God uses these things. They're they're part of life, right? He doesn't send it. I don't think. I think it's a bad way to look. It's just this is the way the world works because it's a fallen world. Mm -hmm. And when it happens, and He gives the opportunity, it, it does create the possibility for us to see the hand of God like we did here mm -hmm. because the trees could have fallen other ways. And uh, yeah. if we could be, again, then we would have had to do something different, but he, he kept us there to see the church 
respond. Yeah. It gives opportunity for the, the, the life of Christ in a person to, to respond to a real circumstance and get there. And then mm-hmm. to give thanks for how he can use enormous loss as an opportunity to have people's attention mm-hmm. and to testify. And yeah. uh, he uses it, you know, as, as we're walking in the spirit in the whole thing. Yeah. Amen. So I think it's a, I think it's a great example what we went through and how people reacted, how Christians reacted in Greenville is a great way of living out the Christian life. Right. Like it, Amen. I, I just, I was impacted by that um, even. And so I thought, should definitely talk about it yeah because <laughs> yeah. it's important and even if it's two or three weeks past um think but i would encourage people like continue to pray for the people in north carolina because that is it will take them a long time to rebuild it especially will. like yeah. and the and i think like samaritan's purse have a huge impact amen they have there, had. and they're they'll be meeting those needs for quite a few more right months. um right so yeah it it is an interesting experience, and we're grateful to the Lord for his protection. So, Amen. Anyways, Amen. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Um, you can listen to all of our previous podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. And we will see you again next week. And until then, may the Lord keep you, and we will see you then.